Prašam, smačnego. Oh, thank you. Thank you, yeah. Maybe a Whoa. Oh my god. So before, when I was in college and a couple years out of college, um, really the only priorities that mattered was things that would soothe and build my ego. So this was being strong, being a great athlete, having admiration of others, being on a great team, being on Team USA, uh, having women like me. You know, these were the things that I believe um, if achieved, correlated with my happiness, you know, increasing status, increasing worth, increasing um, just my ego's worth. And so everything started to change. Um, going into my third year as a professional, I was playing in the French uh, B League. And the year before, I was reading a lot of uh, books on mindset because. I didn't know what was going to happen. My second year, I wasn't playing that well, and I was in Finland, and team wasn't playing that well, and I was scared that this would be the end of my career. I saw one book, and it had a guy with uh, his shirt off running, and he looked ripped, and the book was called Finding Ultra, and it seemed like a, a motivational book. Uh, I get on the plane, I read the first four books, maybe five pages each, okay, bored, bored, bored. And then I finally got to Finding Ultra, and I started reading it, and uh, it was very interesting. It was a, a memoir about a guy who, at the time he wrote it, I believe he was 43. And um, it was very fascinating because there's so many correlations with my life. Um, same thing. And then we both kind of had, a, you know, addictive personalities where whatever we do for the good or bad, we go full. And so if I was going to work or train, I put everything I had. And like this guy too, when I was young, if I go party and drinking, I also put everything I have, you know, I drink until my eyes close. And, and uh, one day when he was 39, he was going up the stairs and felt some chest pain. And uh, his grandfather, who was very fit and who he really didn't know, died in his early 50s of a heart attack. And so it was kind of his wake up call, like, okay, I need to start changing my life or I'm gonna take the same fate as my grandfather. And so with his wife's help, he started re redefining his lifestyle, uh, starting with the plate. So he went from a junk food to junk food vegetarian, vegetarian, vegan, plant-based, and then just really dialing in his food, journaling, all whole foods, organic. And with this, started to exercise, started to run a little bit. And what he figured out is through eating healthy and running is just this, uh, his zest and passion for sport came back. And within one and a half years from training and using this kind of addictive personality to really push, became one of the best triathletes in the world. So I read the whole book from start to finish on the plane. And first I was impressed by my ability to finish a book. I was like, wow, what did I just do? This is amazing. But then I had a, I had to sit myself for 20 minutes because we still have 20 minutes to land. So I kind of sat myself and I was just like, am I going to go vegan? Because before that, you know, like, uh, I was pursuing being the best volleyball player I could be. This was like the number one priority. And so I was trying to take every edge I could, lifting weights, watching video, stretching, um, getting extra reps. And so this I viewed as like, um, another edge I could take with me off the court back on the court and I just kept on reading books and then from there that was kind of like um, the rabbit hole to opening up the veal of what else is out there and from there it went into meditation um, reading more about consciousness mindfulness learning about journaling learning about visualization um, Time to time, I really enjoy doing yoga, but just kind of opening up my mind and pursuing everything that I didn't pursue before. Very, if you can imagine this, I was very like angry and very competitive and at times even very malicious. And, and once I went vegan, I just started becoming more compassionate and more loving and I think closer to my original self or to everyone's original self, you know? I, I don't think a lot of people want to be angry, but they're just not conscious of the stress and frustration that they're suppressing. 
And so I was able to be more of myself and that is someone that wants to do my best but also to to share my love of life and my compassion for other beings and to help other people achieve their best. I believe that there's kind of this duality and in life we have the option of service to self and service to others. And there's always going to be time where we're mostly just taking care of ourselves. But I really want to push more into service to others and to help people because I, I get a lot of messages from younger athletes and most of the times they feel like they're all alone and the problems that they're having are um, they're just uh, they're the only ones having these problems. And so just sharing with them that like everyone experiences them, I experience them and sharing my struggles and failures and using my experiences to, to help others more or less get up. One of the years I played in France, I played with a Canadian who loved basketball. We both shared this love. And so the times I would dig him, I would joke like, no easy buckets, like you can't get an easy kill on me. And I started posting videos and using the hashtag and people really liked it. And I think it's great for, for volleyball because for defense, uh, it's just mindset. You know, you have to have a, a relentless mindset that nothing's gonna hit the ground. But I think it's more important for life and even for volleyball is to have that, that mindset outside the court where, like I said, if you lost or if you're failing or you had a tough game, like you want to have that no easy buckets mindset where it's like, okay, yeah, I lost, but it's only going to make me stronger. And then uh, what I think is really important too is three things within our control because there's a lot of things that aren't in our control that maybe we naively believe. Like for me, when we play Zaravice, it's not in my control if we win. It's not even in my control if I play good because there's so many different factors that play into it. But it's in my control how I prepare, how I get my extra reps, if I watch video, if I sleep well, if I eat clean all throughout the week, if I'm stretching, working hard in the weight room, these things are in my control. I mean, I have said it before, I've, Poland feels like my second home. Uh, I don't know what I've done, but I just feel um, so embraced here. and. Uh, whether it's with my teammates, fans, or just people at the grocery store, I always feel so much warmth. Uh, I feel people here are just naturally so loving, so trusting, uh, compassionate, and the athletes here are so professional and have an amazing character, amazing work ethic.